Hey, Miguel Dorati here for the Lights Out Podcast. And uh, we are concluding our Kevin Randleman tribute. And uh, there's no man that we could get to close this tribute out except for Mark the Hammer Coleman. Mark, thank you very much for joining us. Um, you know, I know obviously Kevin was very special to you. And uh, it's not easy. It's not easy to come, you know, to talk about it and things like that. So very much appreciate your time and, and your love for Kevin. Thank you. It's, it, it's, it's becoming easy. I, I celebrate Kevin's life. Now I, I mourned, I got grieved, I got over it. Now I, I was, I was blessed to, to be able to spend all that time I did with Kevin and, and, uh, you know, I miss him, but, um, grieving's over, live for him. I mean, his, uh, his wife told his uh, wife, Elizabeth, she told me we're not, we're not coming to that USC hall of fame and we're not going to be sad and crying and all that shit. We're going to celebrate. And, uh, it's like I kind of like I guess I kind of let it go right there, and I, I felt a lot of peace. That's really terrific. That's terrific, Mike. All right, okay. so his first fight was October twenty second, nineteen ninety six, Universal Valley Two Do. He you, you entered him into a tournament, um, an eight man tournament. How how much confidence did you have in Kevin entering into that? Well, he was my my right hand guy. I had a I had a hundred percent confidence in myself, and a lot of my friends, like the wrestling community itself, uh, I just didn't believe I could personally get beat. And 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 I had known Kevin so well that training with him, I figured he was the second best in the world. To be honest with you, so I felt like he was going to win the thing, no matter who was there. I didn't know who was going to be. I had no idea, but I felt like whoever it was, he's better than. And then who he's going to face. So he beats Luis Car uh, Carlos Maciel, knocks him out 514, Brazilian, takes on Giza Kelman from Canada, knocks him out seven, uh, seven minutes, 37 seconds. And then he heads up against Dan Bobish in the finals. I, his performance was so dominant in his first outing. I think he put the entire world on notice after that tournament. Would you agree with that? I was already on notice. So yeah, people, he likes to, he likes to crowd up. All of, he, Brazil fell in love with him that night. Uh, he, he, he's so charismatic and um, so, so dynamic. Um, uh, he, he, we, we didn't work on any stand up prior to this fight. You know, we were, we, we had, we had our game plan and uh, well, Randall was a very smart fighter, but I personally would have just immediately tried to get this guy down. That was my game plan. That was my advice to Kevin. But no, Kevin, he was a showman from, from the beginning, and he wasn't afraid to trade. Hey, if you go back and look at them punches, they're kind of ugly. They're very ugly. I mean, I, as far as technique goes, but it don't matter. He was winging, he was winging them things, and if he, he hits hard, Kevin hits hard, and uh, – yeah, I was – I couldn't believe it was real. Just like when I fought, I couldn't believe there's my buddy in there and I'm in the corner screaming. You know, it was the coolest thing ever. He he, he, he beat that poor Brazilian. And Giza was uh, – you know, he wasn't that gifted or talented, but he was a big body, somebody he had to deal with, and he went out there and smoked him. And then and Dan Ball was 325 pounds of serious muscle. I mean, he's one of the strongest guys I've ever – wrestle with his damn ball was but thing is me and kevin we walked into brazil and 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 uh, we walked in with confidence our heads are up and we you know we're taking over and people feel it and damn bulbish felt it and i honestly think damn bulbish was scared to death of kevin randleman mark you're screaming take him down and kevin's just like <laughs> Nope, and just hit them with that left hook of his was just devastating. Yeah, his left hook was natural. That was by far his best punch. That one punch he didn't have to think about. When he threw that, there was a lot of power on it. It was quick, fast. He didn't see it coming. That was his best punch. I mean, it just came natural to him from from the day one. Mark, so, you you shared with us, Mark, that when uh, I think you went to Russia with. Uh, the show, Mark Schultz is a you know, and that was a tournament where you learned a lot and like you grew up as a man. Did, Dave did, Schultz, uh, Dave Schultz, did uh, 
Kevin Randall didn't have a moment like that in wrestling because that would prepare you to go to Brazil, hostile territory. You know, you went to Russia as a wrestler. Is, did Kevin have a moment like that in wrestling? Because I think you would have been his mentor. Well, yeah, the day the day me and him decided to become friends and training partners, he had to deal with my fucking ass. <laughs> That's pretty That's tough. I understand that. Hey, I'm not, I'm not telling you. Hey, I was the man. Hey, <laughs> hey, when we became friends, I'm going to show him what the fuck I did to get to where I was at. And that, and that required me to beat his ass, to be quite honest with you. And okay. uh, he took it. He came back. He came back. He came back. He never missed. He kept growing, getting strong. And, uh, hey, I don't know. But, yeah, I, we, weren't, we weren't afraid to go to Brazil. Here, here let me... I need to frame this so people can understand like what took place in Brazil right after this. Miguel, how many corner men does a title fight generally get? Yeah, three nowadays. Right? Okay. All right. So March 3rd, 1997, Universal Valley Tudo fighting number six, another eight man tournament. You guys start with Ebenezer Braga. Ebenezer Braga probably had 25 corner men. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah, at least. Well, he had, he had thousands of them. <laughs> and they were following the action around the cage. And this is how, like, you knew Kevin. <clears throat> there are levels of, like, not giving a shit and kind of like, hey, man, let's, let's, let's start a riot. Within the first minute and a half, Ebenezer Braga, he's doing something Kevin doesn't like. Kevin shucks him out of the ring through the ropes into Braga's own corner, and then just kind of walks away like, oh man, it's an accident. Let me go get my corner. You can walk around the ring, get up the stairs, and I'm gonna, we're gonna restart this fight. I have never seen a hostile audience in any MMA event without a riot taking place like I did in that Ebenezer Braga fight. You're saying a riot should have broke out right then? Oh my, well here. Well here, no, here's what I'm, here's what I'm having a problem with Mike. Uh... I'm trying to picture the, I don't because uh, it's a little fuzzy, but how did Random get him out? Random threw him out of the ring. He shoved him out of the ring in between the ropes. And at one point, Mark, you challenged an entire section of the audience to a fight. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, here's the problem. They didn't have no, they didn't have no wire on the bottom ropes. You can slip right out the ring, right? Look, that that rule right there changes the whole fucking sport. It's not MMA anymore. MMA plus sliding outside the cage and getting back in. That's not part of MMA. It was that night. Kevin had to deal with them with, with them them three guys that night, Sukata, Ebenezer, and then of course Beheto, but but uh Ebenezer uh he that that was their game plan. When Randoma takes me down, I'm gonna slide out the fucking cage. Well, I asked them, how the hell are you guys gonna stop that from happening? They say, I wouldn't want to be in there with those rules. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to take somebody down 10 times to, to ground and pound his ass because he scooted right out the fucking ring. Right? Well, his corner was also pulling him out of the ring to help well, him. Know, yeah, get I know. Out. Yeah, you know. Hey, we agreed to it, but we agreed to it. So we agreed to it. But I asked them what they're going to do about people coming out. They told me, no, Coleman, we're going to have – everybody's going to be surrounding the cage, and if the fighters come in front of them, they're going to hold the fighters in. They're going to keep them in the cage by holding them in, right? In the ring, yeah. Well, guess what? That didn't happen. That didn't happen. But then one time – Ebenezer's over in my corner and he's trying to scoot out for about the fifth time. And I, I left my corner probably by about 10 yards or whatever. I left it to go meet these guys in the middle. And I just held Ebenezer in there with my fucking forearm and random and just plowed him two or three times. That's the way the fight should have been. It would have been over in two, three minutes at the most, but he's scooting out. So I held him in there. And then of course, yeah, the, the riot should have started right there. A riot almost, a riot almost did start right there. I'm not kidding you. It was, I was, you know, it just, I was, uh, I was, I, I was too, too intense to to be scared. But in hindsight, 
yeah, I'm lucky to be alive here for many reasons these days. That's I mean, one of them. You could have ended that night if the Lord wanted it to. So, Miguel, at one point, Ebenezer's own people are dragging him out of the ring to kind of get a restart and, you know, hoping that Kevin's going to tire down. And Randall is in phenomenal shape. At one point, Mark is looking at the audience and the audience, no one, they all sat down. They all sat down when Mark <laughs> turned around. It's, it's phenomenal. It's, it's amazing. You guys have to watch this fight. Well, so, what happened is that was, I'm pretty sure that happened in the Bahetto fight in the finals. No, it, it, it happened twice. It happened in oh, Ebenezer. It yes, you, you challenged well, the, the same one, section the, more than once. I remember the one with Bahetto. Because yeah, they somebody threw a somebody threw a, a glass of um, like pop or water and it hit me right in the back, and uh, it exploded. Randleman is trying to take Bahetto down. It's about the eighteen minute mark, and he hasn't been able to get this guy down. And somebody throws a can at me, so I turned around. I took my eyes off the ring for which what, what should have been about two seconds, and I should have let it go. But I turned all the way around and. I asked him who the fuck was going to come first, you know, come, who's coming, who's coming. And then all of a sudden I realized I turned back around because Randall was in the middle of a fight. I turned back around and son of a bitch, somehow he got Bahetto down. He took Bahetto down when I wasn't watching. I, I missed his takedown. <laughs> that, but that was 20 minutes. And, you know, I kind of like, because I just never give up, you know, as bad as, I mean, uh, I mean, he, he just was in, he was in real bad shape, Mike. You know what I mean? He was, <laughs> Randleman was in real bad shape. Going into the fight, he had multiple injuries. His thumb was broken, I think. His his uh, knee was uh, torn. His rib was fucking snapped. Um, uh, his eye was completely swelled shut, Mike, before the fight. I mean, I'm talking 100% almost. So, so here, he beats Ebenezer Braga, 20-minute decision. He then goes against Wolf Slayer from Europe. Their head coach, Mario Neto, knocks him out in 11 minutes, 36 seconds. And Carlos Bejeto, he fight, he loses into a triangle, but it's 22 minutes and 24 seconds. He's got an almost a solid hour of fighting underneath him by the end of the Bejeto fight. It was a heroic performance. Dude, it's, sometimes you gain more respect in a loss this was one of those instances. Well, it was. I mean, it, it's almost like he won. He definitely, he won that night. You know, I was, I, you know, and I, I really couldn't believe what this man did that night because I, you know, I was, I was amazed. I mean, it, it truly was uh, epic as it gets. Uh, I mean, the dude was so, well, the, the, the you know the the stack was decked against him like I've never seen it. Was they were me, all and man, me and Randleman versus the country, man, the whole fucking country. That's why I blame Brazil for my loss. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's funny, Mark. You know a little bit of history that you mentioned there. So this is March of 1997, and like you said, you were telling them, "How are we going to prevent these people from you know scooting out of the ring?" In July of 1997, Bottarelli started the IVC, and they at least tried to put a net there. And that listened. worked. Yeah, they listened to you. I, I know Nick Nutter loved it. <laughs> no, that net was uh, needed. It was needed years before, and that, that's the only thing that made it MMA. The other yeah. the other sport, when, when you're allowed to slide out the cage and restart all the time, that's not MMA. MMA, a fight starts and it don't stop. And and, when you shoot out the cage, you got to walk around, get back in the cage, and start it over again. That, that was, that was, that's yeah. This is one of the most amazing stories that nobody really knows. What Randleman did that night, <laughs> that was special. I mean, Jesus, he was. We, we never after the second fight, we went back to the locker room. His eyes halfway swollen shut, his thumbs broken, his his knees torn. He he tore a. He tore the teardrop drop muscle in his leg, and that rolled up in his leg. And we didn't know that, but his leg was just hurting. We figured it out later what happened, but that was horrible. Uh, um, shit, other things, too. I can't remember. It was so bad. 
but we never once, I never once even thought about or considered talking about maybe we don't fight it in the fucking finals. I mean, in hindsight, it wouldn't have been an option, but I could have at least requested it to random and for a conversation. <laughs> random would not have had no part of it, but I didn't even I knew random didn't have no part of it. So I'm going with it don't matter. We're gonna get through this. And I thought he was gonna get through this. 20 minutes into it, he takes Bahetto down, and I still believed he was gonna find a way to win. And then he gets stuck right in my corner in that triangle, and he never tapped. You know, he never tapped. He was, he had just kind of went out and, and the rep, I got up in the cage. I don't know if you've seen that. A little altercation happened then. Me and oh, Bobby you made really, sure. You made sure. Me Kevin and Bobby really protected. shoved each other. Or me and the ref. Yeah. But. Well, and, but well yeah, I they weren't see, taking points. Mark, they weren't taking any points at all. There was no warning. They had corners all over the cage. At times, you had his corner and your corner. They were kind of afraid of you so they gave you a little bit of distance but they were no, I mean, no, was, mul mul multiple times they weren't afraid of me multiple times it was like the shovel match over there you know, i was trying to man they're in my corner trying to get a better getting a better spot than being in my corner they wanted my corner but they also wanted <laughs> the best spot in my corner so i had to fight for my position it was nuts absolutely yeah nuts. it was great it was, it was it was fantastic man it was uh unbelievable that we was there i could it just almost seems like how you know, I, none of that shit would have happened uh, in 1991. That's not possible. It's not even a dream. Not yeah. even a dream that you have. And then all of a sudden, it, I did it. You know, it, it, that, that was impossible 10 years earlier. Yeah. And, and his UFC debut against Maurice Smith at UFC 19, March 16, March 6, 1999, um, it was almost like redemption for yourself when he, when he fought Maurice. I, I had no, I had no, no doubt that he was going to beat Maurice. Um, um, he, he had no doubt either because well, he, he knew good and well, the problem I had with him and, and, and Kevin really judged a lot of his things on how he would do against me or how I did against somebody. And he was incredibly confident. He had a good camp for that. That's one camp that I think you really wanted to win because it was Maurice, I guess. So, you know, Kevin didn't always have the great camps. Right? I mean, he wasn't consistent, but, but the Maurice Smith camp, he, he put in a hell of a good camp, which I'm glad because he needed it. Maurice, Hey, Maurice fought a hell of a fight that night. I, I, I figured Random was going to be able to finish him, but Maurice fought a hell of a fight. Yeah. You know, from there he goes past Rutan, and after that, he avenges another loss of yours, UFC 23, November 19, 1999, Pete Williams. It's almost as if they're, tr they're, they're not doing him any favors, and they're, I don't know. I, I don't think the UFC gave much, you guys much love. No, the Hammer House wasn't loved. They just they loved us. They just didn't fucking know it. <laughs> With the true. Hammer House. No, they wanted to get rid of the Hammer House. Fuck yeah, you know, but I don't know why. I know why they wanted to get rid of me, which I, I understand, but I don't know what they had a problem with Raymond for because, uh, man, he was a, a charisma machine. That dude. That dude could have drawn some ratings. I don't know. I have no idea why. Because he's a wrestler, obviously. But he could punch. Random could punch. We've seen that. So after he beats Pete Williams, tell us about what took place backstage at UFC 24 with the main event with him and, uh, and Hizzo. Uh, I'm just going to go real quick with it. But, yeah, we show up at the arena. Um Kevin, he's got energy like nobody else. He always likes going, hanging out in the arena and meeting people. He was great with the fans. And we, we just walk into the locker room. And he says, I'm going to go out and walk around. Yeah, go ahead, Kev. See you. And then about five minutes later, uh, uh, the guys he left with, the boys he left with, they came back and said, Kevin just fell. Uh, you know, I didn't know. I didn't, you know, it was just kind of confusing. What do you mean? And, and uh, it, about his... Uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Bizarre, I guess. 
Mm-hmm. Body yeah. bizarre of a situation you could have. He uh he was walking through the curtains to to they they cut the arena in half, so he was walking through the curtains to get to the arena, and somebody had left uh, like six pipes that set up the uh the thing that the, the curtains that cut the arena in half. Somebody left the pipes laying right there, just like you see on just like you see on a cartoon, a duck slipping on a banana peel. That's basically what happened to Randleman. And he slipped on the he slipped on the pipes. He plowed his head on the on the on the cement on the ground and he was out. He, he was he was knocked out. And when he came back, that was it, man. He had to take him to the hospital. He still wanted to fight, of course. On the way there, he's like, he didn't want to leave or nothing. He still wanted to fight. And they they calmed him down by telling him. If we hurry up, we might be able to get back in time, which I'm pretty sure they just said that just to calm him down, but because fights off, man. That was uh, bizarre, but it, everything happens for a reason, and he, he came back and fought him at a later date. Did you uh, have to break the news to the Hizo camp? Oh, I don't think so. I don't know. I can't remember. Okay. Maybe. Maybe I did. I don't remember. I mean, it, it kind of fuzzily. Kind of fuzzy that maybe they did have me go in there and tell Hizzo. Mm-hmm. Hizzo says that when you went into their locker room, they just like freaked out. It's like, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? And you're you know, being, hey, man, this is what happened. This is what took place. And he's like, we thought it was like a practical joke. We weren't sure. We, yeah, you know, we thought there were head games played with us. You know, uh, <laughs> oh, shit, I should remember this, man. <laughs> Damn, yeah. that, that's neat because now that you told me, it comes back to me. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I do remember they asking me to do that, and uh, they were they were upset because I came in there what trying to spy on them or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to spy on some people. I had to spy on Wanderly Silver the first time I met his ass. I had to spy on him in his locker room and caught him oiling up before the Van Arsdale fight. Jeez, that was a mess. That's the story. So, yeah. Randleman mm-hmm. goes on. He beats Izzo in you know, uh, at, at UFC 24. Oh, no, UFC 26. He then beats Babalu, but then leaves the UFC. What was the reason for, for that taking place? That's how it happened? Yeah, after he fought, he, he beats Babalu, and then he leaves. He goes right to Pride. Yeah, no, no. After after Rizzo, he, he, he took a couple losses to Couture. No, uh, so I said, like, Mike Davis, you ain't the private detective. You ain't on this one. That ain't how it happened. And, and Ch- he took a couple losses to Couture and Chuck Liddell, and then beat Babalu, and then left the UFC. But they left the UFC on a win. Yeah, we were gonna. We were just trying to skip over the losses. No reason to talk uh, about. Okay, that. I was just saying it wasn't that quick. Something else happened. Uh, I'm trying to figure out right now. I'm trying to realize. I thought he I thought he left on a loss. No. They cut him. I thought they cut him. No, you think they the cut keeper. him on a win. Huh? I think they cut him on a win. Well, that's what I'm saying, but that if that happened, uh, that don't make any sense. Uh, yeah, you know my right. feelings. It shows huh? it shows that he shows he beat Babalu at UFC 35, and that was his last UFC fight. And then he then he fought uh he fought this guy named uh Foster, he fought some guy named Foster in, um, yeah, Brian media- Foster, huh? Brian Foster, yeah, he fought Brian Foster in a decent sized show, and then, uh, whatever. Then I just, whatever, I didn't take much. I just went to Saki Kabara here. Look at this guy, Kevin Random, he's ready. Bring him in, it's perfect for this, shit. and that's that's all it took, really. So, Marilla Rua. At Pride 24, December 23rd, 2002, you guys, Hammer House and Shootbox has got a lot of history between you two. And his fight with Hua, um, Murillo's coming off a loss to Fedor. This is a bounce back fight. He's got a lot of fanfare. Um, he's kind of being championed as a, a future movie star. And then he runs into Kevin Randleman. Do you remember cornering Kevin? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't, uh, Rua had that kind of, uh, uh, momentum going. They, they thought he was going to be that good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Kevin cut him the third round. No, no, no. I, I know that. I was just saying Shogun had that big a hype behind him. Absolutely. Fought. 
Absolutely. Oh, so, 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 so Pride was probably once again pulling for the other. The Arrows just wasn't loved. We didn't get much love. We, they wanted to use us to get beat up. But I agree with that. But no, uh, that's when Kevin, that, that night, Kevin's athleticism, athleticism showed, man. Jesus. Uh, another left hook. Hey, you go back and look at his career. Uh, at least six, eight, ten people, he either dropped them or he rocked them with that left hook. Uh, ask, uh, ask Chuck Liddell about it. Ask uh, Rampage Jackson about it. Crow cap. Left hook, his left hook is just its just perfect. It's just so smooth. He, you know, he can close his eyes and throw it. He probably did. So with who, uh, you know, Kevin's on a four-fight win streak, and they were saying the winner of this fight gets Wanderlei Silva. Do you remember those talks ever taking place? Because that fight never happened. Yeah, I, I remember a little bit about it. I, I don't know why it didn't happen. It sounds like it's uh, it sounds like it was obvious, easy matchup. I don't know why they didn't pull the trigger on it. It'd have been yeah, great. That would that would have been epic. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, you had Sean Solis in his corner too, and uh, Solis, obviously no longer with us. I I, I thought he. I thought he did a really good job with Kevin's hands. Like you, you oh, yeah. got to see a little bit more of him. He, he, we, we love South Solis. Me and Kevin loved that man. We went and spent some time with him down in Texas. Uh, he held the pads for me. Uh, he was just fantastic. He was money with them pads and him and Random and they jived. He made Random look real, real sharp. And, and he got him in shape and Kevin believed in him. And he, yeah, he looked good. He looked, he looked damn good that night. That's good. Um, Pride Grand Prix, Murphy yep. Crow Cap is 13 yep. and one in his last 14 fights. He's a heavy favorite. Kevin Randleman's five and two in his last seven fights. He's on a two fight skid. He lost to Rampage and Sakurabo. It's a it's a pretty pri pivotal fight for him. What do you remember about Murko? I was backstage. I wasn't in Kevin's corner. I was backstage getting warmed up for uh, the. How, how, how cool was that night, my two hammer house guys in the main event, cold main event. That was a big, big night. And then uh it don't get big, any bigger than fighting Crow Cop. The dude's uh, uh dude's world famous legend. But you just can't ever count random one out against anybody, man, because he's that explosive. And it, it, in some people want to call it lucky punch. That's crazy. I go go look at his career. He threw that punch multiple, multiple times. That's his go-to, man. That's his go-to when he needs something big. And uh, he he did have studied uh, Crow Cop, and 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 then Chuck Liddell, I think, gave him a few pointers on Crow Cop kind of telegraphs when he's going to throw that kick. And uh, that was Kevin's plan going into the fight: is to to when he, when he, when he gets ready to throw that first kick, he's going to jump on it and throw a left hook and. Uh, Hey, man, it really does a game plan come to fruitation like that, but holy shit. I mean, believe it or not, that was the game plan. I mean, fucker executed it. He's an executor. Hey, under the lights, man, Kevin can perform. He can perform without the lights, but them lights, they give him tons of energy, man. Were you watching that fight while warming up? Oh, yeah, of course I was. Uh, of course I was. Uh, it, it was it – was, it was super cool, but at the same time, it was it was real weird. I've never had this kind of – I've never had to deal with this kind of situation before. So, honestly, I was as happy as I could be for the guy. But at the same time, I have to keep my composure because I got the biggest fight of my life coming up in five freaking minutes, man. So, <laughs> my, my dad was back there with me. My dad was back there with me, and he got – he was jumping and screaming for old Randleman. And he ran up, he got in my face, he said, it's your turn, it's your turn. He was yelling at me. I'm like, Dad, chill the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it, it, yeah, it was, uh, I had to calm back down, man, because Jesus, you know, I, I had to calm down and, and then, yeah, I mean, then, then I went out there and did my thing. So, uh, he had Chuck Liddell, Wes Sims, and Ron Waterman in his corner, and that, is a legendary, legendary fight. And, you know, Mark, we know you were limited with time. We're going to end with, uh, you know, on my end, with his fight, June 20, 2004. 
one of the greatest slams in MMA history was against Fedor Milianko, a man you fought two times. Yeah, I mean, I guess I was surprised when it happened, but in hindsight, knowing Kevin Randleman, no, man, like I just said a second ago, you put the lights on that man, he's going to shine, and he, he, he can do things that, you know, he can do things that nobody else can do, and I really didn't ever see anybody kind of pick a man up like that and, and miss, miss breaking his head by a quarter inch. Um, yeah, I was in the corner this time. Jesus. Uh, I, I kind of noticed right away that Fedor had survived because I seen it. I was watching real close and I did notice that he barely got his head tucked. That, that, give Fedor credit on that because if he don't tuck his head, he's dead. He did tuck his head and he missed by like a quarter inch. And then, uh, you know, to be quite honest with you, uh, in, in a grapple match, you know, Fedor, his, his jiu-jitsu skills are just, you know, they, they, they were just better than Kevin's at the time right, that, that night. But, hey, that, hey, that moment will never, ever, ever pass. It don't matter. It, that, that, that highlight will be highlight for life. Crow Cop, Fedor. Uh, Kevin Randleman, you got to put them three names together. So do you think Kevin was shocked by it? Because it seemed like he hits the slam and you're all over it. Like you're, you're as a cornerman, you let you, I mean, you're going to hear your voice, you know, no matter the entire arena is going to hear what's coming out of your mouth and you're right away. Hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him. And Kevin was just, he kind of took his time. Yeah. You got, that's another thing. You got to be perfect sometimes. He was uh, almost perfect on the slam, missed by a quarter inch. And then, <laughs> like you said, if he if he reacts immediately, it just touches his face maybe once. Maybe that fucking fuzzies him out. But he gave Fedor that half a second or second. He gave him one second or whatever it was. And that, that was the game changer. Oh, you got to be perfect, man. It's a, there's only one goat. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, can I close with one? Because I, I yes, heard, sir. I heard Mark that you could tell a, a, a great randomman story about the year he won the college wrestling national championship and he had a broken jaw. Is that, is that accurate? Can you fill us in on that? Well, yeah, it's a random. has got so many highlights. There's just, uh, when I write my book, I'm definitely going to use his name, but he'll take up half my book telling stories about him. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he breaks his jaw heading to the national national finals. Uh, I think we're in the semifinals or something like that. It wasn't the finals, was it? I, I, I'm, I'm hoping. He, I think it was you... the semifinals. It doesn't matter. He's in a tight match, and he uh, uh, had dislocated jaw. But but he, he he didn't think about not competing, but a lot of people wouldn't even have been able to compete, let alone win. Uh, he dislocates it. He, they, they put it back in, but during the match, he dislocates. He comes running over. to the, they, they take a break. He comes over to me and the coach and the, the, the trainer, and he looks at the trainer. He looks at the coach, and he tell, he's telling him to pop it back in. And uh, I've never been in this situation, you know, so I'm just watching. Hopefully. Dr. Coleman. <laughs> and uh well no he they wouldn't do it and he was just saying hit me he was saying fuck it hit me in the face i mean pop it back in anyway you know and <laughs> and uh he looked at me and told me to hit him and i wouldn't do it and i just couldn't do it man I, that'd be <laughs> i don't know man i just normally it seems like that's something that i would do mike but for some reason i didn't do it so he jumps down on the floor and he slams his jaw into the mat. I guess it popped it back in. He went out there, finished the match, and then he, he went on to win the Nationals in the finals with a dislocated jaw and all that shit. So just, just fucking it, 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 as great as they get. Kevin Randall is as great as it gets, man. Mike, that's, that's, that's what you call a savage move, right? Is that the word? Savage? Savage. Savage, man. man. <laughs> I'm, I'm just so glad that I had about 25 pounds on him and about four inches. That really came in handy. Yeah. But he, yeah. he, he, he was a beast, man. We, we, uh, hey, we weren't intimidated by anybody. 
when, when, we were, when we when me and him were together i mean it, it felt like 10 of us you know what i mean so yeah. I, I wasn't when he was around and i, I wasn't afraid of anything when he was around i, I just said he just gave me we gave each other confidence yeah you know uh we did a poll and in regards to going to prison and picking an mma team to to join you hammer house was 100 percent of the vote getters you definitely no, that's not true. <laughs> you definitely for me it is i'm going with yeah, i know house. but somebody actually did that poll a while back a pretty big poll and uh the fucking diaz brothers came in first we will fuck them guys up uh, <laughs> but we were we were second which i was very pleased with that you know image that's the kind of image hey that's the kind of image that you know, I wanted, I don't know what Kevin wanted. Um, I don't think he minded it, but I wanted the people to be respect us and be a little bit intimidated and maybe, maybe be a little intimidated or scared, but we didn't go around bullying people. We were kind, but when it came time, we wanted people to be, Hey, intimidation is, is a big part of this game. You know, you get in there and, and, because fear, fear is, uh, it's deadly. And uh, confidence is the key to all this. And, and you kind of need more in yourself that you can't just be on your own MMA fighter champion. You got to have people around you that bring you up to a new level and give you the confidence to believe that you can do this shit because it's the greatest sport in the world. Wrestling's right up there. We'll give them both tied for number one. Greatest sport in the world. And Random was the best ever, one of the best ever's at both of them two sports. So I miss him. I appreciate you guys doing this for him. And we uh, appreciate your time, Mark. I thought it was important to get you talking because all right. you know, you, we, we try to get a tribute going uh, for him, you know, and some people would say, yeah, you know, uh, wh why now? It's like, why not now? Like you said, it's like, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate his life. Everything is a great memory. So thank you very much for the stories, man. Well, who says why now? Uh, you know, I, I couldn't get everybody to cooperate and jump on for the video. They were like, oh, you know, it's six years. Why didn't I do it last year? Or, you know, everybody's got cares it. cares about those people then. That's right. That's right. All I care who about. Who cares about those people? Was hey, Elizabeth, Elizabeth's going to keep his name alive forever. She's going to keep his name alive until she dies. And then, and then when she dies, she's going to have his name secured. And they're going to keep, they're going to celebrate his name for, for eternity because he's got the wrestling clubs going. Uh, uh, Elizabeth's not going to let his name go anywhere. And I'm going to help out any way I can. Hey, Mark, in my opinion, there needs to be statues of, of you and Kevin. I mean, both you guys with your accomplishments, had he beat Fedor, you guys both would have been UFC champions and both would have been pride champions. I mean, that is an impossible feat to even wrap your head around. He came this close from pride, but both of you two teammates, UFC heavyweight champions. Yeah. I, mean, I, I believe that, that that's what statues are made of. We were blessed. We, 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 yeah. We're blessed. I'm blessed. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to be here. Grateful for all the stuff we got to do, and and now, uh, now, now, just uh, I'm heading back to the gym, training fighters, trying to trying to help other people live their dream. Awesome, Mark. Thank, thank you, you Mark. so much thank for your you time. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Be good, brother.